We're back for another. Oh, he sure is traveling, we hear. <laughs> He's with the basketball team. Yeah. Matthew Barnett's joining us so that at least the panel will look better. I've got my invoice today for you. Yeah, so. all right. I don't blame you. <laughs> Give it to Schwer. <laughs> he takes care of everything else. All right, Matt, a lot to talk about. Let's start. We're, we're doing this on Tuesday because we wanted to get Monday night's basketball game in. Who knew? I, <laughs> I did not see it coming that way. I knew we played well. You know, I knew it was going to be a tough place to, to win at uh, because of who they are. Uh, I also knew that they breaking in a new head coach um, and a new starting five. Yeah. So I had a feeling the chance was there if we played well, and we played well. <laughs> oh, McNeese played very well. The Will Wade era begins. Will Wade will be on the show in the third segment, but it begins with a 76-65 victory yeah. over wow. VCU in a very tough environment. A national brand program right. uh, sends a lot of messages. Uh, yes, Big messages to the Southland Conference, like, why'd you pick a second? <laughs> um, but more and more is the way they played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was like watching a, watching a veteran team in yeah. mid-season form, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Five uh, turnovers in that environment. Yes. And what I think, and we talked about it, is a lot of class at the end with Christian Shoemate right. not dunking, but also they handled every VCU run. Absolutely. And Absolutely. what we've seen in the past is McNeese teams crumble in those situations. Mm -hmm. This team took the punch and then fired back. Yeah, you know, and you, five turnovers, two of those were in the second half. And one was on the opening play. <laughs> right. So, yeah, absolutely. This team, it was fun to watch that game. Um, you saw a lot of, we said, you know, veteran leadership. Uh, there's several players on this squad that have played in environments like that and in rougher environments as well. So. I knew going in after talking to Coach Coach Wade about they're not going to be rattled no. at all. They're, they're not going to be shell shocked or intimidated or anything. So, uh, you know, just watching how and really a, a lot of players stood out and and really performed when needed. You know, you had you had uh, DJ sit, hitting knock, knocking down the DJ three pointers. Richard, yes. You had Shahada doing a great job of of managing the game and. And then at the end, or I say in the last, the final five minutes, uh, Shoemate just took over. Yeah, I mean he was Shumate just dominant, just a dominant uh, you know, force. You look at the the three layups he made, one of them a dunk. They were all contested. There, I mean he used just pure strength to get to those, and he made them. He got fouled on them. I thought, yeah, there was no call. But this is a a completely different McNeese basketball team, and you know it, it's. It's going to be a great ride. Well, the Shoemate thing is interesting because last year he had a really good run at the end. Right. But that was against Selton competition. Mm -hmm. He did not always play his best against the mid-majors. Mm -hmm. He played physical yesterday that we haven't seen. And I think a lot of that has to do with now he probably he doesn't have on the shoulders of him being the guy. Yeah. You know, I, okay, well, you know, I'm one of the guys now, not the guy. So I think that helps him play a little bit more relaxed. And, and really more confident as yeah. well, especially you know, in the first half you look at, he missed some shots, but he had nine rebounds at halftime. Yeah. So he was still the dominant force on the defensive end. Well, actually on the offensive end, because five of them were offensive yeah. rebounds. So he got his double-double again, kept that streak going. And he just finished in the second half. The, the absolutely, the absolutely. And it, and it was all around because you can look at some of the, the, the balls that were thrown to him, some of the passes that were made. Yeah. Uh, it, it was just a great, great chemistry on that floor. And he hit a three. And he hit a three. And too. he hit a absolutely. three. Okay, <laughs> yesterday we also had the women open up. In, yeah, uh, that was that was fun. That was noisy. That was fun. Thirty five hundred kids were here. Absolutely. Elementary school kids. The women looked. Uh, there were still some problems from last year carryover with the turnovers and that. But I will say this: the two freshmen from Oklahoma yes. looked like they fit right in. They had twenty eight minutes and twenty three minutes. We didn't see anybody play twenty eight minutes last year. They look like they fit in. No, and, and I like the way the team moved the ball around yeah. as well. I think they're, the chemistry on this team. We talk about chemistry and how important chemistry is. Chemistry on this team is a complete turnaround from last year. And you could see, you saw that on the court yesterday, um, moving the ball around. You know, there were some shots that were missed. They seemed to were, like each other. But there were some good year. shots taken, you know. And um, so I think this team has a chance. I mean, they showed yesterday that it, fundamentally, I think they're going to be a really good ball team. Um, 
athletically, I think there's some improvement to be yeah. made there. But if they're there fundamentally and they're playing as a team and good chemistry, it's a chance to be really Got to shoot the ball better than they did. Yeah, yesterday. absolutely. And, and got to uh, – And that'll come. Got to yeah. turn, the ball, turn the ball over a little less. Right. Those are two things that did happen last year that we saw. But other than that, they looked like, like – like I said, they looked like – they were having fun and yes, enjoyed each absolutely. other. Absolutely, we absolutely. did not see absolutely. that last year from and, that and team. And Coach Kennedy was very relaxed. He was on the bench, you know. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't have to kill anybody. See, right. They beat Dillard yeah. handily by 29 yeah. points. They play Sunday against Prairie View. Yep. The men open up the Will Wade home era without Will Wade. Right. Uh, I always like to give them that dig. They're one and zero without Will Wade. Yeah, Let's remember yeah. that. But they open up against the College of Biblical College Study. College of Biblical Study sounds very, very, very four very o'clock formative. on Friday afternoon. So an uh, odd time, but that goes with the uh, block party. Block party you know, at the, seven o'clock. Friday night block party uh, that night. So you know, after what happened uh, Monday night at VCU, I'm expecting a big crowd uh, Friday afternoon. Then just walk over and Absolutely. listen to walk some over. music. When we come back, we'll have Molly Kubacher of the McNeese soccer team after this. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done! Tell me how the day unfolds Traffic fast or traffic slow The feeling is so fine, I gotta say When you're knocked down, sometimes it might take a little longer to get back up again. But even still, know that you will. To the problem solvers, those who knocked the dust off and started over, we're glad you're still here. We're thankful we're all still here. Since 1907, we've been your Louisiana bank, your community bank, and together we're getting back closer to normal every day. It's our heritage. It's who we are. And that's what makes Evangeline, well, Evangeline. At Lakeside Bank, we specialize in stress-free banking services. Now you can stress less with our Great Escape Spa Giveaway. One winner a month can unwind with a relaxing spa package from Scarborough Salon and Day Spa. Then, in December, we'll give away a luxurious relaxation trip for two to Miraval Resort in Arizona. Now that's stress-free. Register today at any Lakeside Banking location. Stress less at Lakeside Bank. Welcome back to Polk Nation. Joining us now is Cowgirl soccer coach Molly Kubacher. And Molly, wow, what an outstanding performance by the Cowgirls in the Southland Conference Tournament mm -hmm. last weekend. Got it all the way to the championship game. Mm -hmm. uh, lost a heartbreaker to Lamar, but what an outstanding season for the Cowgirls. And yeah. I guess the, the tournament run, something the Cowgirls hadn't been in the championship game in many, many years. So just kind of talk, take us through that, that, that feeling of being able to go far into the tournament and how the girls you thought played. Yeah, um, they definitely did a fantastic job throughout the entire season. It's hard to you know, see everything that they put in into that one final game, but you have to look at everything they did leading up to it, fighting through injury, fighting through you know, a season last year that we didn't exactly do the best we feel like we could have. So this year, I mean, it was all about being gritty and fighting through everything. And the one thing that you can say about this team is they they never quit, ever. So fighting all the way to the second place in the tournament was really, they earned it completely. Now soccer, you know, soccer is one of the, probably the most popular sport around the world. Everybody knows how violent it really is. And, <laughs> yeah. and there's no pads yeah. or anything. No. Uh, and you see some of these hits that, that's taken on the field, and you talked mm -hmm. about the injuries. How do you yeah. overcome something like that? And the next person up, and you just better be ready to go? <laughs> yeah, through the grace of God, they make it through. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, they are some of the toughest girls I've, I, I've ever met. They fight through everything. I mean, our seniors are – you know, some six-year seniors, they've been here forever, been here since 2018, and they're still fighting through. Um, 
Javi Gonzalez, our trainer, is amazing. <laughs> she helps them through everything. Um, but they just keep fighting. You know, we take the rest after, after every single game, and they take it and get back in there. I mean, we're giving them breaks whenever they can, and they mm -hmm. go out just as hard. And they're always coming off of the field just huffing and puffing, and they're limping <laughs> after games. And they still go out like, like it's an absolute war. They're just they're so tough. Yeah. Now, your head coach, Drew Fitzgerald, made a point during the tournament to talk about respect and mm -hmm. that McNeese doesn't always get respect for soccer and that. Did you guys use that as a fuel, and do you think you earned some of that at the end of it? Yeah, I think that they proved it themselves, and it was always kind of, you know, take that chip, put it back on your shoulder, and just go out there and prove something to everybody because not everybody liked the style of play that we um, put out on the field but the girls committed to it and really fought through every adversity. You know, on one of the broadcasts, they said that it was an upset that the yeah. number four seed beat the number seven seed, HCU. And I think the girls did a really good job and ourselves as a coaching staff of saying like, you know what, okay, um, we always have something to prove. We always have respect that we need to earn. It's, it's never deserved. Um, so they always just, took that and made the best out of it instead of taking it as something that made them scared. It was just always proving something to ourselves even, like that we belong to be there, you know, we're, we're in it always. One thing you mentioned right there was the change of direction of the team. Mm -hmm. You changed the style of play you did mm -hmm. basically in season because of injuries. How sure. was that taken at first, and then how did you win kind of the kids over? Because you went to a more deliberate style. Mm -hmm. We did, and it was a lot about organization. And you know, one of the three things that we built our season on, there was three words. It was um, commit, compete, and celebrate. And throughout training, the things that you don't see is you know the style of play was introduced to the girls, and it's always growing pains when you do that at first. But then we trained it, you know from preseason all the way leading up to the tournament, just re-emphasizing what kind of style we wanted to play and that the girls' commitment to that style of play and just trust, I guess, between the players and the coaches was what brought us through because any team that we talk to afterwards, you know, the coaches, we always have good relationships throughout the Southland with the other coaches and they said, you know, always it was resoundingly so of, you guys are organized, you're hard to break down. You can tell that the girls are disciplined and just committed to this style of play and they always hit it hard, every single training. Now so. you, um, you played at Wyoming. I did. You won a Mountain West Conference Championship with them. Mm -hmm. How different was it being able to play for a championship and being able to coach for a championship? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wasn't any less stressed. <laughs> I was, I was, you know, when you're, a part of a team, you're a part of a team, whether you're on the coaching staff or as a player. And I think my attitude, player, coach, it's always, you know, it's about the team. It's about committing to whatever the team needs in that, in that moment, what kind of motivation you need, what kind of commitment to what style of play. And I think it, it doesn't change at all. You know, I felt just as amped up, just as much a part of the moment. And I think that's, that's the beauty of being on a team, especially like this one and the one I was on at Wyoming, I think they're both very special to me, and it's all about like those relationships and the commitment to each other that makes it something special. And so. then uh, talking about less stressful, how stressful is it to have a game going to penalty kicks? <laughs> it's <laughs> super fun and a situation you don't want to be in again <laughs> once you make it through. Right. But uh, the the electric charge that you have after winning a big moment like that, I mean. Jackie Kelly, <laughs> I, right. you can say Jackie Kelly. You know, yeah. she, she was fantastic in those PKs. And I mean, really, I, I've said this, you know, behind closed doors, I'll, I'll say it, like, I think she's the best goalkeeper I've ever seen. Yeah. She's just, she is um, <laughs> tough and committed and intelligent. And she was big in that moment. And the team was so amped up just about how well she performed in those PKs and how well, you know, the rest of the team, the rest of the tournament performed in those PKs. I think the rest of our PK takers were also fantastic and composed. And it was in that moment, like it's a big moment and they rose to the challenge and it was 
it's it's special to win like that, you know, no matter what. So when we come back, Will Wade, a very happy man today, will join us after this on Polk Nation. Serving the community of Southwest Louisiana since 1954 and a loyal supporter of McNeese State University for over 30 years, Southwest Beverage has provided scholarships to students, supported athletic programs, and sponsored the Banner Series since its inception. We pride ourselves on being the premier beverage supplier in Southwest Louisiana, offering an extensive portfolio of beer, spirits, and non-alcoholic beverages. We're Southwest Beverage, and we want to say thank you for your support. Tell me how the day unfolds Traffic fast or traffic slow The feeling is so fine I gotta say Ever since I was young, I've known what I wanted to do. Sure, I had some guidance along the way. Thanks, Mom and Dad. But eventually, I had all I wanted. Family. Career. It went by fast. Now I'm here. Retirement. And thanks to sound financial planning, it will be all I hoped for. And our children will have a secure legacy. For me, retirement is the next great chapter in my life. Ferdinand and Financial Group. Let us help you make a plan. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Gary Brooks, Kyron Lee. Whether on the field, in the community, or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. We're back in Polk Nation. Will Wade is joining us. The Will Wade era opened up last night, Monday night, and Will Wade was on his couch. <laughs> right? I was sitting at home watching it. Yep, I flew back. Uh, I, flew, I was with the team in Richmond. Oh, we flew up Saturday night. Yeah. We got there late Saturday night. I was with the team. We practiced twice on Sunday. I did the uh, scouting at Sunday night. I did a little, my little pregame speech Sunday night, and I got in an Uber and went to, uh, went to D.C., Flew back from D.C. to, to Houston on uh, on uh, Monday morning, and I rolled into my driveway at 5:30 and turned on the game at six. Had a good time. A lot of people talking about maybe <laughs> Mr. Chambers should be the new head coach. Yeah. Maybe he's the, maybe <laughs> they he should quicker, be. Happens quick around this place. Let me tell you. Okay, so let's go into big win over VCU, an 11-point victory. That's 22 and a half points if you count by the spread, but who goes by the spreads? Uh, and we could have dunked it at the end, but we didn't. He, and he did. And I thought right. that was, that was, I thought that was really yes. classy. I was, uh, uh, I was Christian glad, Ch I was uh, glad we didn't. Chimate. I was glad we didn't. <laughs> um, considering half his shirt was already off, I think it was. Well, that and just, dunk. you know, you, you have, well, look, you have such a, you have such a good, I've had that happen before. Like, you have such a good night, I, and that's usually when the backups are in and they want to yeah. score. You have such a good night, you dunk that. Who knows? You could have a fight. You could yeah. have brought, like you could have a lot of stuff happen that could turn something that was just a, a tremendous night for our team, our program, our school, our community. You know, put put a, put a black eye on it. So that was very very smart by Christian and and uh, really really good play by our, by our guys. But now, I wasn't I wasn't real happy with Hades Miss Dunk and the other, the other <laughs> stuff. But we'll get that. You will, fixed. You, will nit, you will nitpick. Obviously, that's we'll what get that fixed. Do. But overall, you have to be pleased with the way they played and how hard they played. Yeah, but going to that environment and only turn the ball over five times is, is phenomenal. Uh, that gives you a shot to win. You know, we lost the rebounding battle by two. Um, I thought that was a huge stat going in. And, you know, I mean, they're bigger and more athletic yeah. than us down low. But I thought uh, Cullum, you know, his stats didn't show it if you're just looking for points and that sort of thing. But he was unbelievably physical, gave us a physical presence down there. He met him on the baseline outside the red zone four or five times and stopped some would-be layups. He had a huge one-and-one -one to kind of salt the game away for us. I thought he did a really, really, uh, really, really nice job for us. But, you know, overall, we, we, we went in there and we did what we needed to do. I knew, you know, look, we got a good team. We got good players. We got a good team. But you never know how we're going to react in the yeah. environment. When you go into an environment like that, the reality is we've, we, we've, we've had two scrimmages. They've both been at home in front of nobody, and, and certainly we've looked, we've looked decent in those. 
Uh, but you never know how you're going to go when you go into a hornet's nest, sold out, 7,500 people, you know, everything. New, new start, fresh start, new era that they, that they had at VCU. And so I thought our guys did a phenomenal job. If you, if you watch, like, just how connected our huddles were. We talked about being connected. Our huddles were really connected. At the end of the game, Cullum got a little feisty. Our guys all huddled up and walked yeah. him down the court at the end to keep, yeah. I mean, we do, you just never know if that stuff's gonna translate. We've been working on that stuff since June, but you never know how that's gonna translate and if you're just gonna lose your mind in an environment like that. And we didn't, and that's a credit to Chambers, Vern, and Nick, and Brady, and Reed, and, 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 and Daryl, and just our whole crew. Uh, just to, and Steve, our strength coach, just to kind of keep everybody, keep everybody together, and uh, I was really, really pleased with our guys with that. And and one thing I, I noticed, big time, was that even whenever VCU they had a couple of mini runs there, the team never got rattled. They stayed collected, calm, worked through it, uh, faced it, beat it, everything. And that's one thing that I just haven't seen around here before yeah. is. Uh, you can tell the maturity in this team, the leadership in this team. There was never a, a sense to me watching it anyway that, uh oh, here we go. Yeah, I thought I thought Hade did a tremendous job. He had control of that, and um, I thought he did a did a great job. And that's what you have to do. I mean, you got to stand in there. I tell our guys all the time, gloves up, like a boxer. You drop those gloves six inches, you get knocked out. But if you can just keep them up and stay in the fight, stay in the fight, stay in the fight, you can eventually counter back and, mm -hmm. and, and you'll be fine. And that's what, that's what we want to be known as, just a tough team, a tough out. I tell our guys you know, all the time, if, if, if you're going to kill us, you better drive the bus over us, you better kick it in reverse and make sure that we're dead and run <laughs> us back over. Right. Um, because we're, if we got any life, we're going to find a way to kind of squeeze it out. But, you know, look, I mean, we built a big lead. Our end of the first half, that's something we work on all the time. We were, we were not very good. We've got to get that corrected these next couple of days. We should have gone in up 15 plus for as well as we played and as well as we shot it. But, you know, we, we, you know the game never got below seven. Right. That's tough to do. I mean, we, we controlled that game. We had, um, you know, we had our runs. We countered their runs. I think when they got it to seven, we went on an 8-0 run mm -hmm. immediately. So just really proud of our guys. That's what happened. We got veteran guys. We got guys, you know, Garcia had been in that environment. Hade, yeah, it was a great environment, but he played at Kansas and Iowa State. I mean, so there's just, he's 23 years old. There's just some experience that, that those guys have, having been in those environments that, that really, really helped us and rubbed off on some of those, those younger guys that we had out there. Friday night or Friday afternoon, you come home to play College of Biblical Studies. Uh, in Why are you moment. grinning? I'm, I'm just a happy guy. <laughs> okay. I'm trying, trying to stay level here. But um, <laughs> uh, how excited are the kids to kind of play in front of the home crowd for the first time? Because we, everybody said they'll talk about, hey, it was a great, out, but they wanted to see this team. How excited are they to play? Oh, we're gonna, we're going to be excited. I mean, the, if you're going to have a good team, you've got to win your home games. At the end of the day, you've got to have an unbelievable home court, an unbelievable uh, home court advantage. We've got 16 home games this year, and, and we need to win a lot of them. We're not getting to 23 if we can't win a lot of home games. Uh, but, you know, the, we, certainly when you have home games, you know, the first impression goes a long way. And so we want to have a big, bold first step here at home. We want to make a really, really good first impression uh, on our fans and the folks that are going to come out. Hopefully we're going to have a great – uh, student turnout. Hopefully, you know we've we, we've we've really done a good job pushing season tickets, marketing. Uh, Matthew and his group, PJ, those guys have done a phenomenal job pushing season tickets. So hopefully, we'll get a good crowd and we'll have people show up, and then you know our guys will respond to that and and show their appreciation for people coming out by by playing well and and playing uh, with that underdog mentality and just being relentless out there. The Will Wade promise is now down to 22. And counting, so that's that's just probably one you didn't have on your bingo card when you were I counting did, the twenty three. You know? He said in his in his press conference, introductory press conference, we're gonna put McNeese basketball on the national map. I think he did that last well, night. Oh he did that last night. They Absolutely. became they became relevant in one night. They're gonna be talked about now. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll get Matt's final thoughts after this on Poke Nation. Hey, she's on her way up. Hey, G, I got you something. Hey, Coach, what do you think? Is this too much? If you look good, you play good. All right, then. Let's get it done. Tell me how the day unfolds. Traffic fast, the traffic slow. The feeling is so fine, I gotta say. Oh, Will 
Wade's excited, so we should all be excited. How's that? <laughs> you hurt my hand high five when I, I walked I, in. I'm here. telling you. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to football for a minute. Yeah. Interesting this week when Monday uh, Gary Goff announced, as I think everybody expected, the starting quarterback will be Camden Six Killer. You know, he uh, he looked the part. I think he I thought he it. for his first time playing a college football game. Uh, when he came in against Southeastern, uh, I, th I think we have found the future quarterback for our tr of our program. Well, we've been looking because uh, he's the eighth guy to take a snap <laughs> under Gary Goff that's in two incredible. years. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> but you could see that you could see that as he progressed throughout, especially in the second half. You know, that's the kind of, of play that Coach Goff has been wanting. Yeah. To, to you know, the up tempo, moving the ball, uh, that kind of play, and we saw that uh, in the second and half. He led them to 17 points in just over, well, actually yeah. in all the second half, but just over a, a half of football. Right. Yeah. Nine for 19. He did throw a pick in the fourth quarter, but he threw a 77-yard touchdown pass. Yeah. That kind of gives you hope that, okay, let's see what we got now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, He's poised back there. He doesn't. He didn't play like a fr true freshman at all, in my opinion. You know. Uh, no. He did take some sacks there at the end, but I, uh, those were more. Uh, I don't think those were hurt his fault. You no, know? he's trying to do too uh, much, and, to and too much. they they were only going to blitz at that point. In time. And then the interception he threw was about a thirty-nine yard punt. Anyway. Yeah. So. Exactly. Uh, but no, I th I think uh, it's an exciting time. I think if you're a receiver on this team, I think you're excited uh, to see what what Six Killer brings to the offense, and you know he. Threw a touchdown pass to uh, only the second second player to catch a touchdown pass, pass. all year. <laughs> all year. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we've had one player, John McCall, has John five McCall's touchdown ca catches, but you know, finally in, in game number eight of the season, Marks gets we one. have a we have a second player. And the, the the interesting thing for me is because getting him established as a quarterback is a huge step in keeping the receivers for that extra year that you got to keep them. Because let's face it, the recruiting season actually begins now in that locker room. Well, absolutely. You know, you've, we've got some guys on that team that this coaching staff is going to have to recruit to stay. Yeah. And I think some of those guys, or maybe all of them, when they say, okay, well, here's here's our guy now. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun with him going forward. Um, you know, I think I think we'll see probably see Six Killer take the majority, if not all of the snaps, the, snaps the next two games. Um, so I think that with him at the helm now and, and being named the starter, this young, very young, young receiving uh, group uh, is like, okay, hey. Has a leader. Absolutely. Has a leader Absolutely. to follow. Uh, final home game of the year, Houston Christian. Mm -hmm. um, a wild week for you guys because you got three basketball games, men's. Yeah. You got a women's game, got a football game, got a concert. A volleyball Just match. came off a, a, a great baseball game with LSU. We got a volleyball match on the volleyball match. Same day as football. So yeah, it, it's crazy, you know. But it's hey, it's crossover season. That's what happens. Um, yeah, we you know uh, basketball game, men's game at four o'clock on Friday. The the uh, the concert Friday night. The Chiwis, you know, which is a the great, Chiwis, a great group. Um, and then Saturday at eleven a.m. we have volleyball, which will be senior day for volleyball. And then, of course, um, football game Saturday night at, at seven o'clock, which is going to be senior senior night for and partial that. homecoming. And also, the homecoming court will be uh, well, announced, and then um, or presented. presented. It's already yeah, been presented, announced. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's going to be a great night. And then, of course, Sunday afternoon, uh, women's basketball. And senior night will not take a lot of time because there's only four seniors. <laughs> so that's yeah, one yeah. good thing about it. Yeah. Well, we'll see you next week on the McNeese. Poke Nation show and don't forget Pokecast Wednesday nights from Mr. Bills. We'll see you next time.